in good morning everybody this is professor mohyuddin alamgir from department of pathology now today's topic is inflammatory bowel disease as the name suggests inflammatory bowel diseases are a group of disorders which are characterized by inflammation of the bowel wall and when i say it's a group of disorders i mean to say that it encompasses different categories of inflammation of the bowel wall that inflammation may be because of uh, some some infective organisms like bacteria parasites uh, or even viral infections or it could be because of autoimmune diseases or even immunodeficiency disorders so we may start with the topic of ibd now here is a case scenario i may read it out for you a 49 year old woman sees her physician for abdominal pain and diarrhea frequency was 6 per day for past 1 month a history of similar episodes of self limited pain and diarrhea which have occurred several times during the past 20 years so this is a this is a 49 year late middle aged woman or the history is of past 20 years with periods of remission and relapses her stool sample is positive for occult blood but shows no ova or parasites in the stool so this statement rules out the presence of parasitic uh, inflammation of the bowel wall colonoscopy shows an uninterrupted mucosal inflammation and ulceration extending from rectum to the ascending colon colonic biopsy specimen from the area shows a diffuse predominantly mononuclear infiltrate in the lamina propria okay i may raise my voice so that you may hear it now this is the first case scenario and uh, in this scenario i have tried to portray a, a, a case of uh, a 49 year old woman with a history of a 20 years history of uh, abdominal pain and diarrhea theek okay. hai so and the and the stool contains uh, traces of blood it contains occult blood plus nowadays you all know colonoscopic colonoscopic examination has become very uh, common because of fiber optic colonoscopes now the colonoscopic uh, uh, appearance of the mucosa has been depicted here as it's an uninterrupted or diffuse sort of mucosal inflammation that means reddening of the mucosa there's a continuous reddening of the mucosa and the extent of the disease is from rectum to the ascending colon now through the same uh, fiber optic colonoscope we take colonoscopic biopsy and the biopsy specimen shows a diffuse predominantly mononuclear inflammatory infiltrate now th this is the appearance of the mucosa on colonoscopic examination it would be something like this theek okay. hai here you can see the this is the ileocecal junction the ileum and this is whole of the large bowel theek okay. hai starting from the ascending transverse and the descending colon now here you can see ke this whole whole area is inflamed theek okay. hai na and there are areas these are these patchy areas these patchy areas are basically the remnant mucosa the mucosa in between has been lost theek okay? hai that's why they are referred to as pseudo polyps pseudo polyps means these are not true polyps here you can see theek okay? hai i hope you are visualizing it so these uh, these are the remaining mucosa the mucosal surface the mucosa in between has been lost so they become uh, a a protruded sort of uh, they give a protruded sort of appearance that's why they are referred to as 
pseudopolyps. And here, the more remarkable thing is that this whole inflammation is confined, as the as as was in the description, confined to the colonic mucosa. This is a more enlarged way you can uh, more easily visualize. These are referred to as polyps. These are polypoid appearing uh, mucosal masses, and they appear as uh, as a poly, but they are not true polyps. They are pseudo because the mucosa in between has been lost. So this is something which comprises of not only inflammation but sloughing of the mucosa, or we may say superficial ulceration. Assalamualaikum sir. Waalaikum आलमगीर ठीक है ओके सो वी हैड बीन थ्रू इन्फ्लेमेशन ऑफ द म्यूकोजा एंड एज वेल एज देर इज अपेरेंस ऑफ सूडोपोलिप सूडोपोलिपाइड अपेरेंस अरे एक वॉइस तेज हो सकती है इसकी थोड़ी वॉइस की चैट आ रही है कि स्लो है बहुत बहुत लो है वॉइस हालांकि मैं इतनी जोर से बोल लो बस और कोई और कुछ नहीं करना ओके okay. चले नेक्स्ट स्लाइड स्लाइड देर से शो चेंज हो रही है चले सही ओके दिस इज द माइक्रोस्कोपिक अपेरेंस ऑफ द म्यूकोजा हेयर यू कैन एप्रिशिएट दिस होल म्यूकोजल लाइनिंग इज इनफ्लेम दीज पर्पलिश स्मॉल सेल्स आर नथिंग बट इनफ्लेमेटरी सेल्स हेयर हेयर यू कैन सी दीज आर द इनफ्लेम फॉलिकल्स Okay, these are all lymphoid cells. So, the thing which is readily apparent is the inflammation of the mucosa, and this mucosal inflammation is continuous. There is no interruption. This is inflamed. This is inflamed. This is inflamed. This is inflamed. This is inflamed, and this is also inflamed. And the second remarkable thing is that this these inflammatory cells or inflammatory infiltrate is confined to the boundaries of the mucosa. the submucosa is relatively spared from inflammation so whichever sort of inflammation is there it is superficial inflammation another thing which is more apparent in this uh, photomicrograph is this area this area is a ulcer so there is not only inflammation of the mucosa but there is also superficial ulceration in the gross picture i showed you that these areas appear as sloughed mucosa and the rest of the mucosa which remains appears like a exuberant polyp and that's why we named it as pseudo polyp so these photomicrographs gross as well as uh, microscopic they basically are reinforcing your understanding of this topic no man you are no man understanding of this topic sorry now this is the second case a 23 year old woman has a bloody mucoid low volume diarrhea for past 5 weeks now this is a 5 weeks history and she is a fairly young woman 23 years old woman she has about 5 uh, similar episodes on physical examination she is afebrile and the abdomen is there is abdominal tenderness Uh, there is there are no abdominal tenderness or mass theek okay? hai bowel sounds are present so there is no element of intestinal obstructions labs show sorry for the interruption tarik ye slide puri nazar nahi aa rahi isko hide kar rahi hai meri video इसको हटा दें बस ठीक है ठीक है हो गया ठीक है 
okay we may continue now bowel sounds are present labs show no ova parasites again so it rules out basically parasitic uh, or uh, infective cause of uh, this uh, inflammation of the mucosal wall only mucus and blood with few leukocytes okay they are present in the stool clonoscopy shows friable erythematous mucosa extending from the rectum to the middle of the descending wall again the area of inv involvement is confined basically to the large bowel rectal biopsy specimen shows acute mucosal inflammation with crypt abscesses and epithelial cell necrosis i will show you what are crypt abscesses and what are epithelial so again this is a similar sort of case with bloody mucoid low volume diarrhea but this she the previous one was an older female of around uh, 50 years of age and she, but she had a history of 20 years so it means ke she was affected at the age of 30 years similarly here we have a fairly young woman and uh, she has a five weeks history and the bowel sounds are present no element of intestinal obstruction no element of uh, parasitic infection of the bowel wall and the uh, stools contain only mucus with few leukocytes again clonoscopy was performed and it shows again an erythematous friable velvety mucosa and that is a diffuse sort of inflammation uh, extending from rectum to the middle of the descending colon now rectal biopsy specimen shows acute mucosal inflammation with crypt abscesses and epithelial cell necrosis here we can see what are crypt abscesses you know the intestinal uh, Uh, intestinal folds are in the form of fronds they are like fingers okay this is this is my finger and when we see on the slide it is tangentially cut like this so this is a tangentially cut finger or the mucosal fold and this fold contains within it here you can see an acute inflammatory debris comprising of many neutrophils okay these are referred to as crypt abscesses crypt abscesses basically show they are the sign of active inflammatory bowel disease active inflammation we say when we encounter neutrophils in the inflammatory infiltrate or the inflammatory cells as well as these crypt abscesses it means although the disease is an indolent one it is an inflammation of the bowel wall um, throughout so many years and weeks and months but when there is an active phase we encounter these neutrophils okay. so in the first two cases case 1 and case 2 we have one category of inflammatory bowel disease that we will be discussing in subsequent slides now in case 3 again we have an inflammatory bowel disease but it is somewhat different from the first two cases so i wanted you to have a look at these cases then we can discuss the what are inflammatory bowel diseases and, and how many categories of inflammatory bowel diseases are there so here in the case 3 a 27 year old man has sudden onset of marked abdominal pain on physical examination his abdomen is diffusely tender and distended bowel sounds are absent he undergoes surgery and a 27 segment a 27 cm segment of terminal ileum with a firm erythematous serosal surface is removed now this is one here you can appreciate this is one category of inflammatory bowel disease in which, in which resection has been performed why resection was performed at this 27 cm segment has been removed it is because the patient presented with intestinal obstruction and this intestinal obstruction is because of non contractibility of the intestinal or the bowel wall it is a fairly large segment of ileum 27 cm okay now here we have an inflammatory disorder in which the presentation is somewhat similar abdominal pain and it could be it could present with low volume diarrhea or blood or mucus in the stools but the more remarkable thing here is the absence of bowel sounds and absence of peristalsis so much so that the patient presented with an acute abdomen of intestinal obstruction and in in, in an emergency surgery a 27 cm segment has been removed now the microscopic appearance of the segment has been shown 
for your understanding here you can see these uh, mucosal folds are not in a very disciplined way they are not in the form of vertical fronts parallel to each other so this is a haphazard mucosal uh, appearance this haphazard mucosal appearance is because of repeated bouts of inflammation and regeneration because of repeated bouts of inflammation and regeneration the mucosa takes something like this haphazard orientation it is not very disciplined or very organized sort of uh, fronts in the mucosa here you can see the inflammatory process is involving not only the mucus layer but also the submucosa the serosa uh, the muscularis up till the serosa and the um, periileal fat so the inflammatory process uh, in contrast to the first two cases is a more diffuse sort of process and it it is basically involving the whole of the bowel wall wall right from the mucosa uh, luminal mucosa so the the inflammation is uh, basically starting from the mucosa layer and it is involving all the layers of the bowel wall up to the serosa so this is called as the transmural inflammation transmural means involving full thickness of the bowel wall in the previous in the case 1 and case 2 we had inflammation but that was confined to the mucosal portion this portion now this is an uh, enlarged view high power view showing whatever inflammatory disorder was there it is forming a non caseating granuloma you may recall caseating granulomas we encounter in we see in tuberculosis now here we have non caseating granuloma it means it includes these elongated epithelioid cells lymphocytes fibroblasts but there is absent caseous necrosis in the center so this inflammation is also characterized by granuloma formation or it's a granulomatous inflammation this is the second category of inflammatory bowel disease now after uh, seeing these th three cases we basically have seen two uh, main uh, causes which we wanted to discuss today of the inflammatory bowel disease next slide okay again in the last case you can see here you can more appreciate that inflammation is basically involving the full thickness of the bowel wall right from the mucosa up till the these uh, the muscularis propria and the it is reaching up to the serosa so this is a transmural inflammation in this category of inflammatory bowel disease in this photomicrograph you can see there is a fissure formation now in this third case scenario we may have transmural inflammation and one of the outcome of transmural inflammation is a fissure or if it extends a fistula formation i may explain it the inflammatory process is so much so that it may involve it may involve uh, uh, nearby loops of the bowel wall and it creates a fistula in between them because of the inflammatory process so this happens this fistula may be between the two loops of the bowel it could be between the bowel wall and the bladder or even it could open exterior over the skin okay so that the uh, fecal contents may come out uh, over the body surface so because of the transmural nature of inflammation we may see these sort of complications fissure formation and the fistula formation in case 3 here again you can see this is a portion of ileum which this is this is the normal area in the side and here you can see this this again a normal but in in between you may appreciate a very thickened sort of wall of the uh, small intestine and there is loss of folds normal normal mucosal folds okay so this thickness of the wall is because of the transmural inflammation okay it's again a chronic indolent process 
ठीक है एंड इट लीड्स टू क्रॉनिक इन्फ्लेमेशन विच इज अ ग्रेनोलोमेटस सॉर्ट ऑफ इन्फ्लेमेशन कॉजिंग थिकनिंग ऑफ द वॉल इवन दिस थिकनिंग मे बी सो मच सो दैट इट मे कॉज obstruction intestinal obstruction or it it may destroy the submucosal plexus of nerves causing aperistalsis in this segment that's why here you are seeing this gross specimen which has been dissected from a patient having this portion which is aperistaltic portion and it 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 was presenting as a case of intestinal obstruction now coming back to inflammatory bowel disease now inflammatory bowel diseases are defined as chronic relapsing inflammatory disorders of obscure origin okay we are not very sure about their origin but one thing is for sure that they are chronic diseases they are indolent disorders and they have periods of remission and relapses it means at times they may be self corrected and at times they may reappear now one is speculation about their origin is defects in the epithelial barrier function the intestinal epithelium no matter it's a small bowel or a large bowel the epithelial cells are basically arranged with tight inter epithelial junctions whenever there is a defect in the inter epithelial junction or the barrier function the normal microbiota or the commensals of the intestine may get entry into the submucosal portion of the bowel wall and they may incite an inflammatory response there the third theory about their origin is a strong immune response against normal flora it means the the normal immune response in the gut associated uh, immune system is somewhat deregulated or exaggerated leading to inflammation of the bowel wall now inflammatory bowel diseases can be broadly categorized into two major categories one is referred to as idiopathic inflammatory bowel disease idiopathic means we do not know the precise cause the second category is inflammatory bowel disease because of some well known disease such as infections bacterial infection viral infection parasitic infection so we have idiopathic bowel diseases and not idiopathic inflammatory bowel disease in the category of idiopathic inflammatory bowel diseases we have two well known diseases which are referred to as crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis in conjunction they are also referred to as ibds ibds stands for inflammatory bowel disease but this idiopathic whenever we refer this condition as idiopathic inflammatory bowel disease it means we are referring to these two disorders crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis and the cases i shown you in the start of this lecture that is the case 1 and case 2 belong to this category of inflammatory bowel disease which is called as the ulcerative colitis and the third case was that of this category of bowel disease which is called as the crohn's disease we may recall that in now these two uh, let me tell you these two disorders differ from each other on the basis of nature of inflammation and number 2 on the basis of distribution as you may recall in the first two cases the distribution was basically confined to the bowel wall from rectum to the descending colon or transverse colon okay but here in the crohn's disease the involvement may be more patchy in ulcerative colitis here you can see in ulcerative colitis the inflammation is there in the large bowel it starts uh, from the anorectal area the sigmoid colon the descending colon or it may involve the part of the transverse colon so whole of the colon may be involved but it most commonly but it, it never you may say never uh, 
involves this small bowel, small intestine. But here in the Crohn's disease, the distribution is more patchy. It is involving here, you can see the large bowel as well as the ileocecal junction, which is a favored site, and the small bowel. It may even involve the gastrointestinal tract up till the esophagus. Okay. So this distribution of Crohn's disease is more widespread as compared to the ulcerative colitis. Here you can see in the first two cases, I repeatedly told you about the pseudopolyps and ulcers. Here you can see in ulcerative colitis, it is characterized by superficial ulceration or sloughing of the mucosa and the remaining mucosa appearing as a pseudopolypoid appearance. Whereas in Crohn's disease, we have transmural inflammation. You may recall in case three, we had a transmural inflammation involving full thickness of the wall and that transmural inflammation may lead to these fissure formation. And these fissure formation may cause fistulas and fistulas may connect with, as I told you, with the gallbladder, with the urinary bladder, with the other uh, loops of the bowel in the vicinity so, or, or even uh, they may communicate through skin. And one other thing which is more uh, prominent here is this fat, omental fat. This omental fat normally does not cover the whole circumference of the bowel wall. But here you can see it is coming downwards and it is encompassing the whole of the bowel wall. This is referred to as creeping fat. Creeping fat or creeping uh, adipose tissue in the uh, omentum is the characteristic of Crohn's disease. So the distribution of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease is different from each other. The second thing which I uh, told you is the nature of inflammation. In ulcerative colitis, we had seen a diffuse sort of superficial infl ulceration, uh, inflammation of the mucosa. Uh, and the inflammatory cells were mostly lymphocytes, plasma cells. And when the disease is active, neutrophils. But in Crohn's disease, we may see a chronic granulomatous inflammation. There is a chronic inflammatory infiltrate plus granuloma formation. Here, the granulomas are characteristically non caseating granulomas. So the nature of inflammation and the distribution is different between these two categories of idiopathic inflammatory bowel disease. Idiopathic because we do not know the precise cause. Certain uh, theories are there uh, for the pathogenesis that have been came, uh, came forth for uh, the pathogenesis of uh, inflammatory, idiopathic inflammatory bowel diseases. The first and the foremost pathogenic mechanism is the genetic susceptibility. Genetic susceptibility is basically shown by the fact that there is 50% concordance rate in monozygotic twins. It means if there are twins which are monozygotic in nature, then there are chances that 50% in 50% in of cases both are affected. It means that there is some genetic predisposition. In diazygotic twins, the prevalence of uh, idiopathic inflammatory bowel disease is 10% 10, 10 or less. But in monozygotic twins, it's, it's as high as 50%. So there are certain genes which have been implicated in the pathogenesis of idiopathic uh, inflammatory bowel disease, such as the NOT2 gene. NOT2 refers to nucleotide oligomerization domain 2 gene. This gene is responsible for expression of a protein which basically binds to the peptidoglycans of the bacteria and then the bacteria are recognized by the uh, immune effective mechanisms there in the gastrointestinal tract. When there is some mutation or polymorphism of the NOT2 gene, then the recognition process of the bacteria, especially when it comes to the recognition of commensals or normal flora, it is lost or it is impaired so that there is exaggerated immune response. Exaggerated immune response uh, clinically present as inflammation of the bowel wall. Then we have certain other genes like AG, a, AGL16L gene, then IRGM gene, they are also responsible for the formation of autophagosomes for killing of the bacteria. So whenever there is mutation, we had these uh, uh, things involved. Okay. 
the second pathogenic mechanism is the epithelial tight junction defect i previously uh, we have discussed previously that uh, that epithelial tight junctions are dis are damaged or deranged in, in inflammatory bowel diseases so that the uh, normal microbiota of the intestinal walls they get entry into the submucosal tissues and there we have an inflammatory response by inflammatory cells then there is a role of intestinal flora in the patients with inflammatory idiopathic inflammatory bowel diseases we have some alteration of the normal flora and that normal flora is being recognized by the host immune system as a foreign one and it could be it could lead to a more potent immune response no I, ibd also happens to appear in uh, individuals which are not twins not monozygotic or diazygotic twins but these these are some of the mechanisms which may be working because we, we do not know the precise pathogenic mechanisms behind the development of these disorders so these are the, the theoretical sort of um, suggestions by scientists that they may play some role so uh, Mm -hmm. The genetics, uh, uh, we, we got the idea of genetic susceptibility when they happen to appear in 50% of monozygotic twins. So it means there are certain genes involved, they are inherited. As I gave you the examples of these one or two genes. Then there is a role of normal flora. Then finally we have abnormal T cell response. Abnormal T cell response means, uh, it may be shown in the next diagram, now here you can see this whole picture or the diagram is from your book, uh, Pathologic Basis of Disease by Robbins and Cotran. And here you can see, I can, I just wanted to know the question. Yes, about intestinal flora. Normally, we have a normal intestinal flora in our bowel, which are, which we refer to as uh, the uh, commensals. And it is in huge quantum, 10 is to power 12 microorganisms in our intestines. They form almost half of the bulk of our stools. But the normal regulatory mechanisms of the immune system, the immune system is there in the gastrointestinal tract. But the normal immune system recognizes these bacteria as commensals, as the normal flora. And why do it recognize? Because they do not... Uh, get entry in large quantum in this space this is the submucosal space so the inflammatory cells are basically spared from exposure to these bacteria but when there is some defect in the tight junctions between the epithelial cells then these same bacteria which are the normal flora may get entry into the submucosal space and once they get entry into the submucosal space we have a constellation of inflammatory immune response because in the submucosal tissue, we have resident uh, inflammatory cells. Here you can see the dendritic cell. Dendritic cell function as an antigen presenting cell. It engulfs bacteria or its components. It break down the bacteria and its components. And these appear on the surface of this dendritic cell in conjunction with MHC class two molecule. And this complex MHC and antigen is recognized by this T cell. That's why I refer to these cells as the antigen presenting cell. There were also, there are also macrophages in the submucosal tissue. Now these macrophages, once they engulf these bacteria, they uh, become activated macrophages and they elaborate a variety of uh, cytokines and factors which are pro-inflammatory. So you see, okay, once these bacteria get entry into the submucosa, they activate both the innate and the acquired arm of the immune system. Both categories of immune responses. Yes, a question has, is there that sir, normal flora is present before birth or, or settled there with time. Yes, it's there, but in, not in every individual we encounter these sort of defects. Whenever these defects are there, uh, in association with genetic predisposition. 
we may see the development of inflammatory bowel disease it not it uh, doesn't happen in every individual it doesn't happen in every uh, twin monozygotic or dizygotic but once these defects uh, are there in the presence of uh, uh, genetic predisposition they may cause this inflammatory bowel disease these are the speculative these are all the theoretical speculations because based on certain experiments and uh, experiences of the scientists because uh, nothing is sure agar uh, if if it was sure then it would have been referred to as not as a idiopathic inflammatory bowel disease so these are certain theories about its development now we were discussing the pathogenic mechanisms now once this uh, cd4 positive t cell is activated now it elaborates it, it it differentiates into it basically elaborates certain cytokines which are uh, proliferating and differentiating cytokines and it differentiates into different types of cells here you can see there are th17 type of cell it may differentiate into th2 type of uh, helper t cell or it may differentiate into th1 type of helper t cells now each of these cells have their role in uh, sustenance of uh, inflammation this il23 is a factor which is required for sustenance of this th17 cell th17 cell is basically a pro inflammatory cell once we have mutations of uh, these uh, il23 then this response of th17 may be attenuated so we may have less inflammation so there are uh, th this ts17 cell has its role in maintenance of inflammation through its cytokines here you can see it is elaborating il17 which is acting upon neutrophils okay so it may so once we have uh, certain polymorphisms of the genes of il23 then we may have uh, attenuation or reduction in the response of ts17 cells similarly th2 and th1 have been implicated in ulcerative colitis they are basically produce certain and here you can see the th1 cell after its differentiation is producing producing interferon gamma interferon gamma is a potent activator of macrophage then macrophage uh, in its turn elaborate tumor necrosis factor and all these factors are pro inflammatory they maintain inflammation okay so the game begins with the entry of bacteria then activation of helper t cell differentiation of t cells into different categories of subcategories of helper t cell and then elaboration of uh, pro inflammatory cytokines by these cells activated cells so this is the pathogenic mechanism behind uh, the development of idiopathic uh, speculated pathogenic mechanism as i told you active ibd is ibd is characterized by acute inflammation chronic ibd is characterized by architectural changes of crit distortion and scarring scarring means fibrosis ho jati hai and chronic uh, ibd we may see fibrosis then crypt abscesses are uh, basically again a sign of active disease as i told you these are long standing disorders they may persist for years 20 years 30 years they have periods of remission and relapses and during the period of uh, relapses uh, the disease may exaggerate clinically the signs and symptoms exaggerate clinically because of the active inflammatory process so in that case we refer that condition as the active ibd now coming to ulcerative colitis so ulcerative colitis is a diffuse mucosal disease with distal predominance you may recall from case 1 and case 2 the inflammation was confined to the colon and the inflammation was a diffuse inflammation not a patchy one <clears throat> like the case 3 in which we saw patchy involvement in crohn's disease so in ulcerative colitis is a diffuse sort of continuous inflammatory process okay so the rest of the slide i, I already explained to you okay yeah. it it peak incidence is is in the early age this is 20 to 25 years uh, is the case of presentation that's why in case 2 we female was a younger female 23 and it has a 5 weeks history whereas in case 1 the female was a 49 years of age so she had a long history so she again was maybe infected or maybe uh, involved at this age and the disease persisted for uh, later in her life up to the age of 50 years
one important thing about ulcerative colitis is that we in in a patient who has been diagnosed as a person suffering from ulcerative colitis we follow these cases through colonoscopic examination a follow up is recommended every few months or in some instances every few weeks because we need to examine the bowel wall for the presence or absence of one dreaded complication and here is that complication here you can see these are the inflamed mucosa these are the inflammatory cells these are the crypts okay and this is a case of ulcerative colitis but here you can see these crypts are lying by dysplastic cells and these dysplastic cells you know they are the forerunner of neoplastic cells adenocarcinomas so in ulcerative colitis there is a real danger of development of uh, dysplasia followed by carcinoma that's why these patients are continuously followed repeated biopsies are taken and once we encounter dysplasia in these individuals we opt for straight away for resection of the colon so that it may not develop into adenocarcinoma which is a devastating condition having a very high mortality so dysplasia is another feature which we look for in patients suffering from ulcerative colitis now the clinical findings all these patients of uh, uh, inflammatory bowel disease they may present with uh, diarrhea low volume diarrhea and abdominal pain or tenesmus you okay. so now the patients of ulcerative colitis also have uh, associated diseases because uh, it could be a genetic predisposition or um, immune related disorder so we have involvement of not only the colon but it may it, there may be involvement of the biliary tree sclerosing cholangitis because of sclerosing cholangitis the patient may present with severe jaundice then there could be bile duct carcinoma Okay, which is a complication of sclerosing cholangitis. So you see, inflammatory bowel disease may present with a variety of extraintestinal manifestations. In case of uh, ulcerative colitis, the extraintestinal manifestations are in the form of migratory polyarthritis, uh, sacroiliitis, ankylos, uh, ankylosing spondylitis, okay, and then we have this sclerosing. cholangitis so they may or appear in in uh, in uh, uh, crohn's disease we have uh, clubbing of fingers and uh, skin conditions got is erythema nodosum and then again the migratory polyarthritis these are these are the extra intestinal manifestations of inflammatory bowel diseases now crohn's disease in crohn's disease it frequently involves distal small bowel and colon so it is not like ulcerative colitis is always confined to the colon it may involve a small wall as we saw in the picture in crohn's disease the inflammation is transmural they transmural there can be ulcer formation granulomas fistulas and inflammation is typically segmental okay skip lesions hote hain in the, this uh, crohn's disease we all we have discussed it all in crohn's disease we have a bimodal incidence early age and late age plus more so often in women okay the extraintestinal manifestations as i told you are arthritis uveitis erythema nodosum and callosing spondylitis even if when we do resection of the colon these uh, extraintestinal manifestation persist in the patient you okay, can we may correct uh, the intestinal obstruction or we may remove the threat of dysplasia and ulcerative colitis by colectomy but these extraintestinal manifestations remain there after the surgery now these are the complications of crohn's disease here you can see this is a uh, basically structure formation here you can see the bowel lumen is narrowed because of thickened wall it may present with intestinal obstruction here you can see there are linear ulcers Okay, which are present in in uh, Crohn's disease, thickened walls and linear ulceration. Here you can see perforated 
wall of the intestine because of the transmural inflammation it may cause perforation the patient may present with intestinal perforation an acute abdomen and the lastly we discussed about the creeping fat the mental fat basically comes all around the bowel wall because of inflammation this is called as the creeping fat so these are all the four features of features and complications of crohn's disease there you can see non caseating granuloma giant cells epithelioid cells lymphocytes all the components of granulomatous inflammation and crohn's disease now this slide is important basically this is showing uh, the differentiating features between ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease so we discuss them all just for example distribution ulcerative colitis diffuse distal predominance always involves the rectum crohn's disease segmental or diffuse often proximal predominance in the small intestine rectum is often spared similarly the complications these complications sorry these complications uh, this is sinus tract fistula and structure they are absent in the ulcerative colitis but they are present in the crohn's disease because of transmural inflammation okay so we discussed it all but this slide is important again you may find it in your textbook all disease which is called as the pseudo membranous colitis and it is because of the overgrowth of this bacteria which is called as the clostridium difficile okay even candida can cause pseudo membranous colitis why it is called called pseudo membranous colitis because this layer is formed over the over the bowel wall which is an inflammatory exudate okay and it happens under the influence of the therapy which is with broad spectrum antibiotics okay the broad spectrum antibiotics alter the normal flora of the bowel wall and it causes overgrowth of this clostridium difficile and this clostridium difficile produces a pseudo membranous colitis pseudo membrane is just inflammatory exudate on microscopic here you can see this is the membrane this is the inflamed mucosa colitis okay colon wall is inflamed and there is a superficial slough layer comprising of inflammatory cells debris of the mucosa dead cells and it appears in the form of a membrane that's why it is referred to as pseudo membranous colitis another question is the diarrhea always bloody in both cases yes usually the diarrhea is of a small volume it's not like uh, bacterial dysentery or a mimic dysentery the the, uh, the quantum of diarrhea is uh, small but the bowel movements are very frequent and they may contain occult blood or frank blood occult blood means the bleeding from the upper portions of the gastrointestinal tract fresh blood means the lower colon and this is because of uh, the inflammation you may, you may recall in your uh, general pathology topics the inflammation in inflammation we have hyperemia congestion edema so there is some oozing of blood and that blood comes in the in the stools so it's present in both more often in ulcerative colitis than in crohn's disease then we have intestinal tuberculosis intestinal tuberculosis is fairly common in pakistan because the tuberculosis is common in pakistan the intestinal tuberculosis basically has its origin in the lungs the primary focus had been in the lung the childhood tuberculosis which basically cause seeding of the intestinal walls and later it becomes activated and it appears as intestinal tuberculosis so this uh, intestinal tuberculosis in, uh, is another cause of uh, inflammatory bowel disease uh, in intestinal tuberculosis we have granulomas but that these granulomas are basically with uh, caseous necrosis which is typical of tuberculosis whereas in crohn's disease we had non caseating granulomas then another cause is a typhoid fever salmonella typhi and paratyphi may also cause watery diarrhea and uh, it affects about 21.5 million persons each year so it's a very 
very common fairly common cause of uh, inflammatory bowel disease and it has some very serious complications like perforation and bleeding okay so this is another uh, cause of inflammatory bowel disease so we have direct again a question last i think this is could be the last question uh, no the questions were all i think answered thank you very very much this with this we come to the end of this lecture thank you very much